it's not a sky video because since my last posting we've had nothing but clouded in well <laughs> we're socked in completely with moisture filled skies people i mean the clouds hold four times the amount they used to because of what's going on anyway i just wanted to put something out there no matter what words you want to put things into there's going to be a crash. It's the matrix. It's whatever you want it to be. But we see it coming. And we know it's coming. So my advice is to be comfortable with your own death. It makes it a lot easier. No matter what you go through. If you have faith in yourself. You can overcome anything. So, maybe listen to this a little bit, because I try to keep every perspective alive. It's the eve of Mars Day. And so, the satsang is an important portal to this sacred day that and it is important to contextualize it in relation to the unfoldment of the matrix of which it is the climactic moment of revelation So for this past week, <clears throat> this one has been cocooning and preparing and downloading and uh, bringing in the messages that are to be relayed, transmitted, some of which have gone into a book that is now nearly complete and uh, hopefully will also be released as a timely supplement to help people navigate through this extraordinary moment in history that all of us are having to face and to overcome its challenges as our final examination to graduate from this level of the wisdom school those who have the desire to graduate and who have uh, the credits to do so and so the importance of this day is something i would like to uh, speak about and the mode of our preparing so far as I know, Mahashivaratri is the only holiday of its kind. Most holidays celebrate an event that took place in the past. And they are uh, rememorations of something that happened. Whether it happened historically or it happened metaphorically, or it happened archetypally is not so relevant to the mind of the worshiper, of the believer. Did the Passover really happen the way that it was uh, told in the Torah? Did the crucifixion and the resurrection actually happen? Did the birth of Christ happen uh, the way that it's told? Did the three magi come? Those are irrelevant uh, details of uh, a an event that is ultimately to be understood as an event of consciousness that must occur for us. And so every holiday of every religion is simply uh, information regarding our own transition to God consciousness from the illusion. Every holiday is, in a sense, a festival of lights, a festival of rebirth, a festival of the uh, return to the lost uh, 
sense of divinity that uh, was exchanged for the mortal mind and the intensity of experience at the human level of the matrix. But Mahashivratri is different in a certain sense. For one thing, it's not a festival of lights. It is a celebration of the night of history. It's specifically a holiday that celebrates the night, the darkness. And Shiva comes at the moment of deepest darkness in history, when all hope has been lost, when all faith has been lost, when all the meaning of all the other holidays has been trashed and commercialized and turned into uh, a, a meaningless uh, uh, repetition of signifiers without a signified. So it, it is that moment when the world has turned atheistic and materialistic and completely lost in a, uh, a complexity of ego fragmentation in which no sense of a unified being, let alone a divine transcendent being, remains in the conscious uh, sphere of uh, of identity, of reality for oneself. It is all a myth. It is all a, a belief system. It's all simply uh, a story told by uh, elders who themselves have lost faith. So it's at this moment that our capacity to overcome our indoctrination and our uh, limitation of event horizon that is stuck within the boundaries of the sensory modality and the logic of the two-valued mind of the ego and uh, the identification with a body that is dependent upon uh, other people, family system, to give it a sense of value and meaning and has no larger context to relate it to the infinite and the divine and therefore uh, creates an ego that is weak and, uh, and helpless and addicted and hysterical and bipolar and all the rest that everyone knows firsthand if not uh, second and third hand, uh, but pretty much everyone has either gone through it and come out of it or is still in the dark night of the soul and suffering from ego fragmentation and weakness and all of the hysterical events that that produces in one's life, as well as the karmic consequences of that, which is suffering on a physical level the karma that hits the body, the karma that destroys our peace, even within the bodily vehicle, whether it's indigestion or uh, ringing in the ears, or it's some pain or one falls and nearly breaks one's neck, or it is any of a number of different karmic events that produce suffering in the body. All of this is part of the perfection of our being tested to recognize that we are not the body, but that we are pure spirit. All of it has to happen exactly the way that it is happening. And all of it is, in fact, a test of our intelligence, of our love, and of our faith. Because if and when we recover that faith, it comes with power. It comes with the ability to overcome whatever symptoms of suffering, whatever tendencies of, uh, of self-attacking mental chatter, whatever uh, kind of uh, delusions <clears throat> that the mind is under that lead it to make terrible mistakes in judgment that produce remorse and regret and all of the other effects. Uh, that the ego mind has either immediately or in the long term uh, for those who follow that mind rather than the mind of God. So it is in this moment that all of that comes to a climax. 
both in the microcosm and in the macrocosm. And we can see all the stupidity of the politicians and all of those people who seem to be running the show, whether financially or, or, or politically or militarily or whatever. We can see that very clearly. But can we see the same thing happening within the microcosm of our own ego and uh, its uh, uh, irrational decisions, irrational fears, irrational uh, pipe dreams and fantasies, uh, irrational beliefs of whatever kind that support the logical structure of the ego to give it the illusion of existence. And that existence requires suffering as its proof. I suffer, therefore I am, is the ego's modus operandi in order to sustain its diversion from the self because the ego is a running away from the self into the chatter, into the suffering, into the body, into the wishing, into the loss and the lack and all of that that produces the kind of world that we inhabit and the kind of mind that inhabits our own consciousness and has usurped our divine nature. So, what does it mean that Shiva comes in the night of history and returns at that moment of deepest darkness when all hope is lost and when uh, we, we feel that we have not even the worthiness to plead for the help of God or for a belief in God, or for a love for God, because the heart has shriveled and its ability to love is shrunken. It cannot even love itself, and uh, its love for others is much more out of fear of abandonment and rejection and all of those uh, ulterior motives than an actual outpouring of the energy of the real that abides in the heart. So in this state,